I started Jiu-Jitsu in 1997 with Claudio Franza and Garth Taylor in Santa Cruz. As soon as I started, I pretty much started training every day. So I teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here at Marcelo Garcia's Academy in New York. I wrestled my senior year in high school, and that was like a couple years after UFC won, but we had just started getting the tapes. You know, the, that was my first exposure, was like everyone's, right? was seeing Hoist, and, and I was like, what is this to my friend? And they're like, it's like street judo in Brazil. It's Brazilian street judo. I'm like, oh, that sounds sick, street judo. And then, yeah, so I started going back and forth to Brazil. I was training, like, within Gracie Baja, a lot of the black belts had their own schools. And uh, I kind of uh, had a good relationship with Gordo, and Hillian also really went out of his way to help me. He was, uh, yeah, he, he was like an amazing, an amazing coach, you know. At some point when I came back, uh, I made a connection with Dave Camarillo who had gone out on his own from HALF. Like he, I'd always really looked up to him, you know. I was still always repped Claudio and Garth, but you know, I was just looking for, for training. And at that point, Garth had hurt his neck and so he wasn't really able to train that much. And, and uh, I think Claudio just had a kid, so I was training a lot with Dave. Yeah, that led to me meeting Marcelo. Uh, in 2007, I just got back from another trip to Brazil, and I was with, hanging out with Dave Camarillo at the Pan Ams. Uh, Marcelo said he was, you know, he's getting ready, tra starting to train for Abu Dhabi, and he invited Dave and I to go out and train uh, with him in New York. And so, at the time, I didn't really have any money, so Dave Camarillo bought me a ticket and gave me spending money to like spend 10 days in New York training with Marcelo, and it was just. Uh, eye-opening experience. I mean, my idea is to draw on all the experience that I have when I teach, you know, from photography and surfing to, you know, what I eventually earned a degree in is cultural anthropology and whatever life experiences I've had and all the teachers that have, you know, I've worked with. But I, so I try to bring all that in and, and simplify whatever I'm doing to the, the most essential way that I can, that I understand it, you know, and, uh, at the same time, like kind of drawing from a, a lot of experience that I've had and being a little older now, I think I can connect, hopefully, with different kinds of students and I try to recognize how they learn and how they're thinking about things and try to use a you know, different wordage to try to uh, communicate what's happening in a, you know, a situation or a position or what the, that idea in the, in the fight is. And, and also trying to be like hands-on. Uh, because you can only talk about jujitsu so much, you know, it's, it's, it's something you have to feel and you have to like, it's like surfing or skateboarding. You could like tell someone and break it down, like how to drop into a wave or drop into like a, you know, if I can do an ollie or something and you just have to do it. You know, you just have to, like, that's kind of what it boils down to. And you, you, you know, you surround yourself with good people and high level people and you absorb that it's like just a human right it's like a human capacity to learn it's like we we figure out a way to go outside yourself and you know that's for me that's what I did it's just like feeling uh, something over and over and then or like seeing something and that appealed to me aesthetically in training like a, a move or a position or a transition and then just trying to put myself in that situation over and over and over and over and over until it clicked and then I got it and as soon as you get it like no one can take it away from you you know that's yours then the main thing about getting good at jiu-jitsu is you have to teach yourself you have to have great teachers as reference points and great training partners but you're the one that's in control of how your training is going to go and, and how you approach it and how you put the pieces together afterwards uh, you know so so once you learn to become your own teacher and how once you learn to think about things for yourself I mean that's that's when you're gonna learn you know no one no one can do that for you uh, you know not me or, or or anyone else you know boom 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 boom